There was nothing I could do. Don't go too far, Philip! I waited with Philip until the ambulance came. He looked so small, so broken. I couldn't believe he was dead. I still can't. I can still hear him laughing just before. And what happened after that, Mr. Drake? I waited until Philip was safe until Philip was safe inside the ambulance, and then a police officer offered to drive me home. We didn't get too far, though. I started to sweat and shake, and my arm and neck got stiff and sore. I thought at first I was just frightened. I mean, I was on my way to tell my daughter how her son was. Well, when the pain started, I guess, the officer drove me to the hospital. I missed his funeral. I couldn't say goodbye to Philip at the cemetery. I couldn't stand by my daughter. How do you feel now, Mr. Drake? Tired most of the time. I don't sleep very well. Mm. I have nightmares, you know. I can still hear that car speeding by so close. I could feel the breeze. I could still see Philip running and then flying through the air. I still hear my daughter screaming and yelling. And I miss him, you know? He was such a good kid. So smart, so happy. None of us will ever be the same. My whole family is ruined by this. I can't imagine what you and your family are going through, Mr. Drake. Mr. Drake, what is it that you want us to do for you? Well, to be honest, I'm not sure. My friend suggested I come to see you. Your firm was recommended to me highly, very highly, I might add. Well, that's good to hear. I'm pleased. And why is it that your friend suggested you see me? I have hospital bills, Attorney Harper. And my nightmares are getting worse. My friends think, and I guess so do I, that the woman who killed my grandson should pay for what she did. Not just to Philip's mother, but to me too. I understand how you feel, Mr. Drake, and how your friends must feel for you, and I wish that I could tell you here and now whether or not the woman who killed Philip, uh, what was her name? Wilma Small. She lives in Hartford, Connecticut with her family. Analyze the facts. Whether Mrs. Small could be responsible for your damages, but... Apply legal rules to the facts. Before I can talk to you about that, we need to gather some facts from you and research some details, and then Mr. Kendall and I will do some legal research to find out what laws, if any, will apply to a difficult situation like yours. Okay, then what? Identify the appropriate legal rules. If there are such laws, we'll look again at your facts just to be certain that we're pursuing a case that will be worth the time and energy that both you and I put into it, and... Report the results. Then after we've done all of that, we'll ask you back to the office so that we can discuss your options with you. Sounds good, Attorney Harper. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Mr. Drake. Now why don't you go ahead with Mr. Kendall and he'll get some details from you and begin to put your file together. Chris? Mr. Drake, uh, why don't you follow me to my office? Uh, you can take a minute for yourself while I gather a few things I need, and then we can go over some of the facts together and fill in a few details. Thank you, Mr. Kendall. Thanks again, Attorney Harper. What arguments would you make on behalf of Mr. Drake's case against Miss Small? What arguments would you make against him? What other information would you want to know before making your arguments or making a decision about the case? <laughs>